for joining us today on Three Man Blitz. I'd just like to take a moment to remind you to follow us on Twitter at Three Man Blitz. Visit us at www.3manblitz.com. You can listen to us on Anchor, Spotify, Google Podcast, Breaker. And don't forget to view us on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe and hit the like button. Thanks, guys. Hey, everybody, and welcome into another edition of the Three Man Blitz. Today we are covering your college team, the Tennessee Vols. If you'll notice, I have a mustache. The guys are going to take lots of shots. And <laughs> Tennessee is definitely Jeremy's team. So this is uh, this is his video all the way. But uh, before we get started, you, you guys should know that uh, this is your year. And we put our five-star hearts into building this episode brick by brick to make sure that it's ready for you guys. Just but, like uh, a Georgia fan to throw a bunch of old antiquated <laughs> crap because that's what they do. It's When's the last time y'all won a national championship? Uh, before I had a mustache. <laughs> Way before. <laughs> so anyway, um, before we get started, we were just going to do this Tennessee video tonight, but we've had some big news hit over the past couple hours. The yep. SEC has opted to go to a 10-opponent in-conference schedule only, and the season will be starting September 26th. And I've actually uh, got those projected games right here in front of me per ESPN, uh, SEC Network. Alabama will be facing Florida and Vanderbilt. Arkansas will be facing UGA and South Carolina. Auburn will be facing South Carolina and Missouri. LSU will face uh, Kentucky and Tennessee. Mississippi State will face Vanderbilt and UGA. Ole Miss will face Tennessee and Kentucky. Yeah, that's right. Texas A&M will face Missouri and Florida. And then in the east, we have Florida taking on Alabama and Texas A&M, Georgia with Arkansas and Mississippi State, Kentucky with LSU and Ole Miss, Missouri with Texas A&M and Auburn, South Carolina with Auburn and Arkansas, Tennessee with Mississippi State and LSU. Oh, no, right. Ole Miss and LSU. I'm sorry. Apologize. We're actually going to talk about those. <laughs> and uh, Vanderbilt with Mississippi State and Alabama. So, uh we're going to have to go back and uh, do an updated projected uh, finish for all of our SEC teams, and we'll just make that one video for you guys. But this was the biggest and latest news to hit, so um, it is what it is. But with that, uh, I'm Andrew, got Jeremy and Queasy, and uh, we're going to go ahead and begin a new tradition today. We're going to save shots for the shot bet, but uh, we call this cracking a cold one. Yeah, cracking a cold one. Hmm. Mine's like lukewarm, but hey. <laughs> it's all right, man. What it don't always on? work like that. What do you got, Queasy? Looks like a high C. <laughs> uh, I'm like leaning into the screen to see it. Jack Daniels. Oh. Oh. Home yum, yum. I'm a yangling guy. You got to forgive me. But. I'm drinking a man beer. So. Oh, yeah. wow. <laughs> Shots fired. Oh, so just touching on that uh, schedule, um, it's not. It shouldn't be too big of a surprise for anybody since a lot of other conferences, Pac-12, uh, Big Ten, I think, have already went to it. Um, the ACC it does, kind of jumped on it too, like not yeah. to the full extent. But I think whenever they kind of canceled a couple of games with the SEC, the SEC was just all right. You know, whatever. We're going to do our own thing. So I think they're kind of backed into a corner at this point. Although. I don't see how it's much safer because you're just adding a couple of games again, so you're really only losing two games. What really sucks is the smaller schools that are missing out on their payday. You know, they they rely on that quite a bit for yeah. their programs. But it's pretty cool for the SEC fans because now we get two extra SEC games and there's no crap game. So every week we should have a good game to watch. Yeah. Um, and across all of, you know college football, really. Exactly. I'll be honest with you, I would much rather, as a Georgia fan, I would much rather, like, I know tradition, you know, uh, Georgia plays Georgia Tech every year, this and that. I would much rather drop that game and take another SEC team. That's awesome. Even if it is just Arkansas and, you know, Mississippi State, that's still that's better than Georgia Tech. And let's be honest, Georgia got off a little light taking oh, Arkansas definitely. and Mississippi State. Definitely. Florida I think got yes. screwed. They did, and I think we can all agree <laughs> that that's a good thing. <laughs> Us on the red and the orange side can agree that that's a good yes, thing. Yes, sir. Alabama and Texas A&M. That sucks for you. But this is a Tennessee video. Finally, yeah. a Tennessee video. So we've got Ole Miss and LSU. So we get to face Lane Kiffin in his first year at Ole Miss. And, oh, of course, wow. the schedule itself isn't released. So we don't know how it's going to shake up. If 
those two extra teams are going to somehow be able to slide in to where you know we've lost games or if they're going to switch the whole schedule up whereas our first uh, Tennessee's first game uh, in conference was going to be week four against Florida um, so now who knows maybe that's week six and I don't know how they're going to have to do it logistically I don't know I'm yeah now the season season's technically starting September 26 which is like basically a month later than it was supposed to start Yep. And uh, so I don't know how bye weeks are going to be broken up and scattered out or if there are going to be bye weeks. I mean, I would assume there will oh, be. Oh, yes. But uh, probably be at least right. two. The I SEC think. championship has been moved to mid-December. If I'm I, Correct me if I'm wrong. I think the date was December 16th or something like that. I think it's 19th. 19th, I go, yeah. I go, it, was, it was a Saturday, obviously, but mid-December anyway. So um, everything's kind of just pushed back a little bit. This may be good news for getting fans in the stands, you know, giving us a little more time to kind of get through this. Um, <clears throat> I do know that uh, Greg McGarity, the Georgia athletic director, did say that fans will be required, and I think he was speaking for the whole SEC, the fans that do attend will be required to wear masks. Yeah, so, no surprise. Uh, this is all the news we've got right now, though. So uh, as more comes, we'll definitely keep you guys updated because, you know, three-man blitz, we're on top of it. Yes, sir. Sorry. Uh, let's roll into this Tennessee video, my friends. Uh, Rocky Top it. and Ball Navy and the Boulder and all those good things. Did you don't say ball, ball Navy? Oh, oh Ball Navy. You don't know about we, the Ball Navy? We, you don't know about the Ball Navy? I have no you idea what the Ball Navy is. You know about the bodies? The bodies hit the floor? Uh, something like I that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so uh, <clears throat> I'm going to kick us off with my – Five or six Tennessee facts. I, I had five, and then Jeremy reminded me of one that I really had to throw in there, so I, I, just, I, I had to do six. And it's not like Florida where I did six because there's nobody kissing players. So, <clears throat> sure. Tennessee Vols. Now, it, it's a unique name. Uh, number one, there are no other Vols. There's no other team called the Vols. And they're called the Vols because Tennessee is the volunteer state. During the War of 1812, Tennessee volunteered 1,500 soldiers to send to fight in uh, Texas, I believe it was. So that's a cool thing. Um, number two, the boulder, or the rock as some call it. Um, an iconic UT landmark for more than 50 years. The rock is a place of free expression on campus. Uh, it's a public canvas, basically, where artists express themselves, and I believe it became like most famous near the end of Butch Jones' tenure when somebody, like, got in there and wrote Fire Butch Jones on the rock. Like, that was, like, the whole, pretty much the voice of Tennessee at that time. Like, hey, get this dude out of here. And, like, there couldn't have been a more significant way to relay that message at the time. So I definitely think that was a, that was a big deal that, that helped get him out the door, which was probably one of the best things that's happened to Tennessee in a minute. That dude was a cancer. <laughs> <clears throat> but moving Sna on. He was a snake oil salesman, buddy. Snake. <laughs> snake. snake. <laughs> so appropriate with your mustache. I, I was thinking the same thing. I hate you. I hate I was you. the same Shave thing. Shave this thing off tomorrow. Like, yeah, do it. <laughs> anyway, for those of you, uh, those of you Vols who aren't interested in my mustache, let's continue to fact number three, SEC tradition here. Okay, so anybody who's seen the movie The Blonde Side – or uh, even if you haven't, you've heard some of the rumors about uh, a body farm under the field. No? That Confused? happened on the blind side? They it mentioned was, it. Was talk, it was talked about. Or mentioned. They mentioned it offhand. It was yeah. like a cameo mention in blind side. Okay. So there are more than 1,000 skeletons curated inside Nayland Stadium. And this is per ESPN. So uh, quit shooting the eyes at me, Jeremy. <laughs> Uh, bodies are donated no. to the anthropology department, which then studies how they decompose at an offsite facility known colloquially as the body farm. So, oh. uh, that's cool and weird. <laughs> so, Quincy's over here worried about, like, eagles dying and dogs buried on the 50-yard line. This, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what now? Hey, hey I've I've kind of seen one. I'm not personally seen one of these farms, but I kind of know what these farms look like. So they have sectioned off different areas. Sometimes in a swamp, water, leaves, dirt. I just to see how a body decomposes. One fully in the sun, whatever it may be, just to see how it decomposes in different situations. And 
it's quite gross and exciting at the same time. <laughs> it's gr- it is gross. Gross and the exciting. The actual, the actual, <laughs> the actual body farm is like a two and a half acre plot, and it's surrounded. It's behind the university, and it's surrounded by like uh, razor wire, and like you can't just walk up in there. Yeah. And it's it's for obviously it's for forensic science. You know, they're yes. studying bodies to see how they decompose in different, you know, situations. And that's and a super good thing. It really is. But it's super it weird. is weird too. I mean, I remember when I first heard it and I'm like, no. Hey, no. <laughs> you guys are really there's no there's no dead people. <laughs> yes. But there is. So yay. <laughs> okay. So Rocky Top. Some of you may know this, uh, some of you may not. It's not actually Tennessee's official fight song, though you can't tell a Tennessee fan that. Boy, they live and die by the Rocky Top. Okay. So uh, it was uh, was composed at the Gatlinburg Inn in uh, 1967 and has been played at the university since 1972. And uh, you guys love some Rocky Top. Yes, we do. Can you hear it right now playing? I hear it. I hear it. And listen, listen. Favorite, favorite time I ever heard it was when uh, Jake Fromm sang it, walking off the field last year. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. Okay. Uh, so, okay. wait, wait. Who's the lady that sings it? I, there's a ton of people that sing it. I don't know who okay. sang it originally. Okay. It was written for... It seems like there's one song that I always hear. Uh, sounds, you know... Archie Campbell. It was written for Archie Campbell. Okay. A Hee Haw star. Because that's real Tennessee of you. <laughs> okay, okay. So, uh, General Neyland, of course, he is the namesake of the stadium. Uh, he is a big deal to you Tennessee fans. So those of you who don't know, those of you just kind of tuning in or who just really don't know your history that well, he was a uh, he served in the United States Army and achieved the rank of Brigadier General, which was a quite impressive feat you know, in and of itself. But he was the University of Tennessee football coach from 1926 to 34, then 36-40, to and then 46-52. to And he is one of two college football coaches to win national titles in two non-consecutive tenures. So that's interesting. He, uh, yeah, he held the record for, or holds the record, I'm sorry, for most wins in Tennessee Volunteers history, I guess as a head coach, with 173 wins in 216 games, six undefeated seasons, Nine undefeated regular seasons, seven conference championships, and four national championships. Wow. Yay. Very, wow. very impressive tenure. And if I'm not mistaken, he also served as uh, AD for a while until his death in 1962. Wow. But, um, of yeah. liver cancer. Yeah, very, very big deal uh, here in Tennessee, which is where we're actually from. We're actually based. But uh, the last fact that I'm going to hit you guys with is just uh, the Vol Navy. It's an interesting and unique tradition to Tennessee. And basically, it's where a whole bunch of drunk Tennessee Vol fans <laughs> roll down the river in their boats. And they'll, uh, <laughs> they'll hook up. They'll, they'll dock up there right next to the stadium. And they'll celebrate and watch the game from there, like on their TVs and stuff. And they'll, they'll have a good time. I mean, it's a, it's a real cool, unique tradition. You can see it on uh, ESPN and... SEC Network, CBS. Whenever you're watching, it's it's really cool. It is. So tell tell getting on the water. Pretty much. Yeah. And it's, uh, what, what water is near the stadium? Tennessee River, buddy. Bruh. Okay. <laughs> Come on. I'm, I'm Come right on. next to it. Queasy, we've got to get you over to Neyland Stadium. I'm, I'm taking the stadium. If we can go this year, we'll put our masks on and we will go. We'll and go. I'll take you to all the sites. Yeah. All I'm the on. sites. Do they play Georgia this year? Oh, yeah. We play Georgia every year. Uh, So we'll go there when they beat Georgia. Hey, all right. I like it. And Georgia's (laughs) always falling apart. So, obvious. All right. All right, Jeremy. Why don't you uh, I'm going to take over. So Whenever you get my key players, I will let you know. Yeah. And we're going to hit them pretty quick. But, so, as we get in, um, as we start with the offense, I have to say, speaking of the Vol Navy, so, obviously, everybody knows and likes to make fun of us, and I was kind of along with it. We lost to Georgia State to start the year out, which we definitely should not have. And there was kind of an omen before the game started, and I even remember saying, like, I hope that isn't an omen, which turned out to be. Um, one of the boats in the uh, in the Vol Navy caught fire and burnt and sank. Oh, wow. 
to the bottom of the Tennessee River. So it did. that they was showed it on TV. It was pretty bad. And uh, yeah, and then we turned around and lost that game. I will say, not as an excuse, you should be able to line up against Georgia State and win with what you've got. <clears throat> but we did have a first year, well, not a first year, but he was new for us, was the offensive coordinator coming in, and Jim Chaney. He has a, a good offensive philosophy, but it's a lot to learn and take in. And uh, we had a, uh, our first year for our defensive coordinator as well. So anyway, but like I said, you should be able to line up against Georgia State and take it to him. And we lost. And then we lost at BYU in an overtime game, which I was at. And, um, yeah, it's a good time. Good well, times. if it makes you feel any better, I hear that Georgia State's joining the SEC. So, <laughs> No, shut up. Sorry, bro. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so just to kind of go off of that, let's talk about Jeremy Pruitt. So this will be his third year. Um, his first two years haven't been exceptional. Um, he's 13 and 12. Overall, <laughs> Will you left quit. I know no, that must leave my must leave it alone. Leave it alone. Leave it alone. Uh, that's Georgia Strong. <laughs> I ever saw it. So, uh, how do you, as a as a Tennessee fan, because I can get a unique perspective from you in this video. Yep. Um, how do you how do you feel about Jeremy Pruitt and what he's done with the program so far? Like there have been bad losses, but there have also been good wins. So for at, me, at least my take. Outside. Yeah, my take on uh, on Jeremy Pruitt is I really like him. So first of all, he he has a background in football. His dad's a head coach in uh, Alabama and has been forever uh, in high school. And uh, Pruitt, Jeremy Pruitt, came up in that, and then he's been a, a coordinator everywhere he's went. Defense, he's a defensive minded guy. He's really good. You can tell that he's not uh, a media guy. I mean, he does okay in the media, but you know he says y'all a lot and all kinds of countryisms. But he's a football coach. You know, exactly. And and that's what I appreciate about him because our last two head coaches weren't, to me, real head football coaches. They were, I said it earlier, like Butch Jones is a snake oil salesman. He could go and he could recruit, but you could tell that he's just, he didn't have what it took to be a head football coach. And Derek Dooley, don't get me started. I mean, there was more recognition for his orange pants than there was with the talent that was on the field. I hated it. But he's put together a really good staff. Um, I think that it, it was already going to take a few years to get us going in the right direction, and I think that's where we're heading now. And you can see it with our recruiting. I think for this upcoming 2021 class, we're ranked like second. We may have dropped a little bit. We've had one or two players flip. But we're definitely headed in the right spot. We're getting really talented. I think um, Butch Jones, I think it started with Derek Dooley. Uh, it was one of the two. It was like 2015 or 16. We didn't even recruit an offensive lineman at all, wow. or we didn't sign one, which is – ridiculous i can't even say what i really want to say because i'm trying to be pg but you know now we actually have one of the best offensive lines in the sec if not the nation so we'll see how it turns out but we've got um trey smith boom ding 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 you hit one of andrew's key players now yes. it's really hard to get stats on offensive linemen so i've got a touching story for you oh, God. <laughs> trey smith <laughs> offensive lineman he's lineman he's a senior Lineman. Lanyon, Lanyon. He's a uh, six foot six, three hundred twenty pounds. One of them big boys. He's he big plays boy. left guard, which is one of the most important positions on the offensive line. In 2018, doctors found blood clots in his lungs, cutting his season short. He played 2019 with no health concerns. He is quick off the ball and hits hard on contact. His running lanes are always clean and dependable, and he will be an anchor for this offensive line in 2020. No doubt. So Trey Smith decided to come back for his senior year. He was already projected uh, to go first round uh, in the NFL. So he could have left and been probably drafted. I don't know if he would have went first, but he, you know, he definitely would have been drafted. I mean, and he, he had decided a pretty good 2019, back. he had a pretty good 2019 season. So he, he, oh, he yeah. probably would have been high second round, late first round at least. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. He's a, he's a stud. Everybody that's played against him, or all the coaches that coach against him, our coaches, they all praise him. He's definitely legit. He's got the talent. So, like you said, he's going to anchor down that line uh, at left guard. And then uh, at right guard, we'll have uh, Andrew's favorite lineman from Georgia, Cade Mays, coming back uh, home to Tennessee. We'll assuming, that. Yeah, assuming that he gets cleared, because right now he's technically not cleared. Well, my personal opinion on that is with this COVID-19 pandemic, I think they're just going to be clearing everybody left and right. I think they would have anyway, but – and apparently, see – we thought that he had already put in his his paperwork 
Uh, but we, he didn't put his paperwork until after uh, JT Daniels, it had been announced that he went to Georgia and was cleared. So a lot of Tennessee fans were like, well, you know, what about Cade Mays? Apparently we hadn't even, we as the university hadn't put in the paperwork. So it just went in recently. So now they're going to start looking at it. Anyway, so you've got Cade Mays. He's a five-star prospect, a fantastic lineman, uh, got a lot of starts, a lot of playing time with Georgia. So he'll come over and be the right guard. And at center, you got Brandon Kennedy. He's also a senior um, he was formerly at Alabama. Um, he's really smart, really good, talented guy. And then at left tackle, you'll have uh, Wanye Morris. And right tackle, you'll have oh, – what's his freaking name? Uh, Darnell Wright. So how and many then, of these guys are uh, are returning? I know Cade Mays has starts from Georgia. I know that uh, right. that Trey Smith is returning. Uh, who else you got returning? Because that's so, important. Yeah, so like you said, you got Brandon Kennedy. He's the returning center. Uh, Darnell Wright and Wanye Morris are starting tackles from last year. They were freshmen. They're really highly touted freshmen. Yeah, so and they played good. Really they were spotty. Yeah. And then we had um, a lot of other guys that got starts, you know, or got some playing time. Jerome Carvin, uh, Karon Calvert, uh, Jameer Johnson, just to name a few of them. So, so you we're guys pretty really in, are a good spot for offensive line. Oh, yeah. yeah. So if you had to look to one position as far as experience and something you could look for, it would be our offensive line. Um, quarterback, we have experience. Unfortunately, it's a lot of starts that were spread out last year because you had Jarrett Garantano. Ding, 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 ding. Oh, yeah. God, you were hoping it wasn't Garantano, but it was. I knew, I knew it, it was Garantano. I know you knew, but they didn't know. Eh. They so, knew. like, wow. he's got a lot of talent. He's got a lot of talent. But I broke his stats down a little differently just so you could kind of see maybe where some of the problem was with him. He was good, but not great. Six foot four, two hundred thirteen pounds. Um, he's a twentieth year senior. <laughs> Seems like <laughs> he's it. been there for a hundred years. What is, what is he legit like a fifth year senior or something like that? I think so. Um, he's quarterback, obviously. Had one hundred fifty two completions on two hundred fifty seven attempts, two thousand one hundred fifty eight yards, sixteen touchdowns, eight interceptions. So he averaged fifty seven point eight yards versus ranked opponents. And average 198.2 yards versus non-ranked opponents. So good, but not great. Like, if you're looking at like the – I know it's hard to break down a team and say, okay, this one position is what's giving us trouble. But this may be that situation for Tennessee. This may be that one position. Um, in Tennessee's five losses, he threw four touchdowns and four interceptions. But in Tennessee's eight wins, he had a three-to-one touchdown-to-interception ratio. So if he had a bad game, like you were done. That was it. Like, and I, I say this a lot. The quarterback is an important position because the ball flows through his hands on every play, whether it's a run, every whether play. it's a pass. He can screw it up like that. So he could be your savior this year, or he could be the reason that you have a bad season. Like uh straight up. But yeah, so. that's that's what I got on Garantano. Yeah, so with JG, man, what it is is he thinks too much. He's not playing football enough, and, and what I mean by that is he's not just letting go and letting the game come to him and reading the coverage pre-snap and knowing from watching, obviously, every game, probably multiple times. Um, when he throws interceptions, most of them aren't just like, man, that corner made a great play. It's more like, oh, my God, how did he throw that interception? He threw that ball <laughs> directly to that man. Like, And I understand like some of those early in the season and late in the season. I just got finished uh, or just finished watching the Indiana Bowl game today again, and he threw one in that one where he's getting pressured right up the middle, and instead of just taking the sack, which you have to do sometimes, he like tries to throw it anyway, and it gets, you know, it, it, the dude hits him in the arm. It goes straight up in the air, and it's an interception, which they take back as a pick six. Wow. So, and he threw two interceptions of that game. The first one wasn't pretty either. Well, I mean, that's when you got to you gotta read it and throw the ball away a little bit earlier. When there's nothing there, you know, that's what you got to do. Exactly. Not so wait till they, they're right on you. Even last year, okay, so who was the best quarterback last year? It was Joe Burrow. What did Joe Burrow do so well? So, to me, it was throwing people open. Yeah, he would throw when the corner is literally in the hip pocket of the receiver. Man, he's throwing it to where only the receiver could catch it, but he's yeah. throwing it. You know, okay. So if there's an out route, you know, you don't throw it after he's already made his cut, and you give the guy time to turn around and react. You have to throw it before, and you throw it to the spot. He's the worst at doing that. Well, see, and there's there there was his footwork too. He was his agility oh. in the pocket was amazing. Garantano Garantano could have used that for sure. Well. 
And Garantano, that's another place where he actually struggled quite a bit. Was he? If, if there's a guy coming straight at him, you know, and that's why he probably threw that one against Indiana. Is that's kind of what he's known for: getting knocked the crap out and still making a really good throw on time. But it's like a swing pass wide open to a halfback. He can't do it. Uh, the first game of the year, I think he threw one like so hard at the guy, it hit him like you know before he even had time to react, and it was behind him, and it was a fumble. And he did that throughout the year. And he got pulled more times. So Brian Maurer got some starts and J.T. Shrout got some starts. Um, and, you know, of course, they were true freshmen and they weren't ready. Maurer showed some some flash. I liked Maurer. I really did. He showed some flash, but, you know, he threw like two touchdowns, five interceptions, and he had like four uh, concussions, it felt like. Oh, wow. Um, Poor kid. And legit. So, and Maurer on talking about starting in this offseason, you know, competing for the starter uh, job – he basically said something to the, uh, the the effect that that's Garantano's job, you know, which isn't – maybe he's just saying that like supporting his teammate, but, you know, that's not really the competitive fire I would want to see. Well, you say that, but you gotta you got to show your respect too, you know. Yeah, and I know You don't want to disrespect a teammate to media. Like, you don't right, but that. there's a different way to do it because it made him sound meek instead of saying, you know, it's going to be a the easy coach speak way to do it is say, I can't wait to go out there and compete. Whoever it's going to be, I know that we're going to be solid there. Exactly. Yeah. I see what you're saying. Harrison Bailey coming in, uh, true freshman. Um, I don't want to speak a ton on him because I don't think he'll get a ton of play-in time this year. Hopefully, Garantano turns it around the second year with Cheney, and everything's good. He knows the offense now. So, But Harrison Bailey, go look at his highlights. If you don't know him, Tennessee fans, are you really even fans? Because – I know that we watched him. I watched him throw like stupid practice routes way more than I should have. <laughs> yeah, I'm a Georgia fan, and I heard a lot about about this guy as a recruit coming into Tennessee. He was supposed to be the next big deal, so we'll he's see. Really talented, and he's from Marietta, so yep. he's from around your way there. So Andrew. let's uh, let's move it on to the running back group real quick, my guy. Yeah. All right, so um, you've got a returning starter in Ty Chandler, um, and then you've got Eric Gray. Also, ding, 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 I told him these beforehand. Don't be surprised. He knew. I dictated. Time, time out. What up, bro? What's, what's, what's the thing with the bells going off? Key players, bro. What's up? My key players. Oh. We started We started this last week. We're breaking up into the end of the show. I was on vacation last week. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, welcome back, Queasy. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Hope you had a good time. I had a great <laughs> time. Missed you, fellas. Yeah, you did. We missed you, too, buddy. We so talked about you a lot. Yeah, we missed you. <laughs> With Florida's wife kissing everybody. Yeah, that, uh, that Tennessee mm-hmm. video. We'll, we'll worry about yeah. it later. <laughs> we'll, we'll, make, we'll make fun of Florida on the Tennessee video. <laughs> <laughs> Eric Gray, <laughs> sophomore running back, 5'10", 195 pounds, um, 101 attempts, for 539 yards, 5.34 4 yards per uh, per rush, which is pretty good. Four touchdowns and had ripped off a 94 uh, yard touchdown run against Vanderbilt. Andy, and uh, I think in that game Tennessee actually set um, the fifth all time rushing record that they've ever had in a game, like they the fifth oh, amount cool. of rushing yards in that game, I believe. Um. Okay, Good. so the story of Eric Gray is the opposite of what you want to see out of your running back as far as, like, the game wears on. Because when the game wears on, you expect your running game to get better. But in the first quarter, okay, first half he averaged 6.88 yards versus 3.88 yards in the second half. You would imagine that the defense would be getting wore down, but maybe there wasn't enough uh, rotation. Ty Chandler, how many snaps did – how, what would you say was the snap count with uh, Ty Chandler and Eric Gray as far as, like, the ratio? Um, it, it was probably, like, 65-25, and then Tim Jordan, who was not with the team anymore, Tim Jordan got a lot of carries as well. And then as the season went on, Eric Gray got more carries and kind of got a bigger role. So, really, the last two games, so against Vanderbilt and then against Indiana, and you look at those stats, that's more of what I'd look at. Okay. Well, uh, this was this was for the whole season. Every yeah, uh, every yeah. Got. But um, all rushes of twenty or more yards came in the first half. But uh, I will tell you that he's got good instincts, and he's a smaller all-purpose running back, sort of like your Kareem Hunt. Um, 
he's an effective pass catcher, and he's really good at making people miss. Really good. Yeah, yeah I like Eric he's, Green. He's, yeah, he's super elusive, and you know he he flashed at times, and but he's a it, he was a freshman, you know. He flashed like Miss um, Mullen, or not quite. I don't know if she if she flashes. She just makes out with players. Um, so Ty Chandler is slated to be the starter, but I would say that he'll have a very hard time um, giving a lot of carries over to Eric Gray. The question really is, is it's definitely going to be a timeshare. They're going to give the ball a lot. He froze. A lot to both of them. Hey, you froze. Oh, okay. He froze. Uh, Tim Jordan, he is no longer with the team. He got in some trouble in Florida, which I'm, I think is where he's from. But um, so everybody gets know. in trouble in Florida. Don't go to Florida, players. Like, don't go to Florida. Don't go to Florida. So I don't know if it's going to be incoming uh, freshman T. Hodge that's going to take in some snaps, or uh, Jeremy Banks, a kid that also had gotten in trouble, is now back with the team. From what I've seen, I don't know if that's official or not, but he's been practicing and or was when they were having practice, and he's been working out with the team for sure. And uh, He was before he got kicked off the team, so in Pruitt's first year, he was taking some snaps, and, you know, he'd run every so often. Um, so, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, so, you know, that's a little bit of a depth issue that we might be having to go through. But the biggest thing, maybe one of the biggest questions outside of your quarterback situation would be your wide receivers. Yes. So, you got Jawan Jennings and Marquez Callaway that are now gone in the NFL. Um, and then you had uh, Tyler Bird, who's also gone, who had a lot of uh, his fair share of catches. So what it looks like your starters are going to be is going to be Josh Palmer. So he's 6'2", 200. And he, uh, him and Ramil, uh, Ramel Keaton, they both showed flashes during the season when they got some play in time. And if, like I said, I watched the bowl game, and um, they both had some good catches in that. So I think we'll be okay. Uh, we also have longtime senior Brandon Johnson. And um, he hasn't really gotten a whole lot of playing time. So that third spot, I'm not real sure who it's going to be, but we do have a ton of talent there. We had um, D'Angelo Gibbs, a transfer from Georgia, who was a defensive back. He's turned into a wide receiver. Um, from everything I've seen, uh, he is extremely talented with the football in his hands. Um, so we'll see how that goes and where he'll get his playing time. We also have Valus Jones, Jr., who is a graduate transfer from Southern Cal. And he's real explosive as a uh, return. He's like a return specialist. Uh, matter of fact, he was the uh, all Pac-12, or he made the all Pac-12 team as a return specialist. So we'll see how he fits into the rotation. He'll That'll definitely, be interesting to see. Yeah. I, Nothing's I more uh, turning. Nothing can rally a team like a good kickoff return. No, no doubt. No doubt. And you know, flipping the field uh, field positions huge. So, oh yeah, huge. Um, and aside from that, we've got a lot of uh, good freshmen coming in. Um, the one I would really look at is Jalen Hyatt. He's six one one ninety, but he runs a four three one forty, um, and he won four straight uh, state titles at South Carolina at his high school. So he knows how to win. He's been a part of winning teams, and he's super fast. So. I'd like to see him in the slot. And a couple other guys just to look for. You got Cedric Tillman. He's a bigger guy, 6'3, 215. You got Jimmy uh, Holiday, who is a former quarterback. He switched. He's also a fast guy. He runs a 4'38. Then you got yeah. Jimmy Calloway. He's 6'210. He also played quarterback and he has big uh, after catch ability, supposedly. Any relation to Marquez Calloway? I don't know, honestly. Yeah. Possibly. Maybe a cousin or something. That would be it nice. Um, and then you got uh, Malachi Weidman. He's uh, 6'4", 205. And I would highly suggest all Tennessee fans or anybody watching this, and you two in particular, my my three-man blitz amigos, go watch the YouTube videos on him. And, Queasy, you're a big basketball guy, so you should go watch his dunks. Okay. He's uh, incredibly talented. He's very athletic. Wow. Like, when you see him dunking the basketball, you're like, Whoa, what's he doing playing football? Yeah. Uh, Anyway, uh, and then so we've touched on the offensive lineman. The only position I got to talk about left now is tight end. We were already a little thin. We lost DWA. That's Dominique Wood Anderson, and so now we've got um, we've got Austin Pope who got injured, and I think from what I've seen, he'll be back. He may be back for the start of the season now that they've pushed it back. I would say he'll probably be back sometime, honestly, in October. 
And outside of him, we've got a, uh, a guy by the name of Princeton Fant who's supposed to be a little talented, uh, real athletic, quick guy, but he's not gotten a lot of time, and I don't know how he does with blocking. And then we're kind of thin at tight end. And the thing with tight end with Tennessee, especially with Jim Chaney, is he runs a ton of two tight end sets. Mm-hmm. So to be thin at that position, I don't know if they're just going to try to work in some other guys and see how they do and hopefully just work them in, or if we're going to – switch some stuff up schematically and run more 11 player personnel and run more uh, like three and four wide sets. I kind of like that anyway, because it's harder to put men in the box when you're having to cover all the, uh, the wide receivers. So. Yeah. And yeah, what we'll I'm see saying, uh, Chaney really does like to use the tight ends um, quite a bit. As far as receiving even goes, that's, that's, that's a good thing because they're definitely underutilized at a lot of schools. Oh, yeah. yeah. I've harped on it before, and that's why I thought they were going to use uh, DWA more than they did last year. He's, he was really talented, and he hardly got used, which sucks. But what you going to do? And uh, one receiver that we do have that may convert to tight end is uh, D. Beckwith. It's a big dude. He's 6'6", 225, so wow. he has the size, yeah. and he's a receiver. So if he can run block, you know. <clears throat> It'd probably be the easiest transition. Other guys we have behind Princeton Fant would be Jacob Warren and Jackson, uh, Jackson Lowe. So I'm well, excited. Even in, even in two tight end sets, you might even not really expect him to block. You know, but a little bit. I mean, even you know, most of the time, even when the tight end goes out, they have to chip somebody. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I think you mentioned a dude named uh, Preston Fant. Yeah, Princeton, Princeton Princeton Fant. All right. Do you know if he's related to uh, Noah Fant? I uh, don't. I, th- I thought about that earlier too. It's a unique but last no. name, so I was wondering. Yeah. Don't hear it a lot. That's two guys. I don't know. So, to look at. get to know your cousins, Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> this ain't Alabama boys. <laughs> they really know their cousins down there. <laughs> yeah, uh, ten- uh, Tennessee defense, Queasy. What you got, bro? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I had, to, I had to pretend like I didn't even say that. Wow. Uh, <laughs> let's start with the line. I think the uh, Tennessee defense, they do run uh, – Jeremy, you should know, uh, more like a 3-4 defense, if I'm correct? Yep, 3-4. For, for the most part. Yes, sir. Um, let's start with the line. To keep some pressure on the on the quarterback, of course, they got uh, Shane – Sean Schamberger, who last year had like three sacks. He did pretty well. Uh, also, they got coming to help him out, they got Kevion Bennett and the Trail Bumpus. Uh these guys should step up, but they will lose somebody very big, which was Daryl Taylor, Taylor, who had like eight yep. and a half sacks last year. He did pretty well. So that's pretty um, solid. Exactly. Yeah. So he dominated that line, but of course he's uh, moved on. Um, as far as the rush defense, I'm, I'm trying to keep it short and sweet, but uh, the rush mm-hmm. defense, <laughs> Tennessee gave up like 17 rushing touchdowns last year. Uh... <laughs> yeah, that's, that's pretty high. And, and to put that into perspective, uh, they got six more than Georgia and Florida combined. Mm-hmm. Gave up that much. So, yeah. so it's, they, need to, they need to strengthen that up. But they do have some bright spots. Of course, uh, Henry Tutua. Ding, 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 ding. You yeah. hit my boy, Queasy. See, Queasy didn't know. Jeremy uh-huh. knew. Queasy was I knew. Say, uh, say that, let's, let's see if we can go. Andrew, Henry Totola. what's his? What's his name? Oh, that was that's pretty close. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Henry uh-huh. To'o To'o. What? <laughs> to'o To'o. Is to'o, it? To'a, to'a To'a. There's no A. How that's pronounced, man. It's like a know. Hawaiian. Like if you took the apostrophe oh, out, it would be Henry Tutu. Stop. 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 Ding, 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 ding. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, ding, ding. Come on. He's a sophomore linebacker. Six foot two, 230 pounds. This is a stocky little man here. Ain't 33 no solo man. tackles, uh, 39 assisted tackles, 72 total tackles, 5.54 tackles per game, which is very helpful, five tackles for loss, which is a pretty good number for a linebacker, and he's got a half sack, an assisted sack. He's got two pass breakups and three quarterback hurries. Um, he is a really good blitzer. He he works well in blitz plays, um, very effective. He can stuff runs. What? What are you laughing at? Is it my mustache? No, man. Go ahead. <laughs> he's good at stuff and runs. Um, he's a good between the hashes coverage linebacker. He's like you're talking about like your tight ends or uh, some of your receivers that are running slant routes before they get to really kick that second gear. He's pretty good in coverage there. And he has first-round potential for sure. 
for sure. And he's a sophomore. We're laughing at my yeah, mustache. Yeah, yeah, he blew up as a freshman. So that's so that's a definitely a bright spot for them. Also, they have uh, Bryson Ethan, who came from Memphis. Uh, at linebacker to help him out. Yeah, there's okay. a there's a there's a lot of question marks, a wow. lot of question marks at linebacker yeah. after Henry Toa Toa because the, um, they lost Patuli, who was like one of the better. It was like his mentor, pretty much. Yes. Uh, so now you got Corvarius Crouch, and like you'd said, Ke- uh, Kevon Bennett. So Crouch is good. Sometimes they use him as a battering ram on offense as a running okay. back. Um, but I think there's a lot of questions on who's going to be like the main pass rusher. Okay. And my concerns last year is teams ate us up over the middle. It was just really bad. They'd spread us out, you know, and we'd have to go into a, like a five uh, corner set and you'd have one linebacker and then they would just bring two guys over the middle and it was wide open almost all the time. I hated it. Matter of fact, Florida killed us. It was like 34 to three or something. And, uh, they just had it. Kyle Trask, it, they made it so easy for him right over the middle. I wanted to vomit. Well, I'm like, oh, my gosh, bringing a safety down or something. Toa Toa should really have developed this uh, this offseason as a pass defender, like I said, over the middle. Like, he was already good at it to begin with. You've given him more time, given him another offseason, give him another season to kind of hone those talents before the Florida game, and I think you'll see a big change. Um, he should be able to help out there. You mentioned yeah. a little bit on that, on that secondary, Jeremy. Um, of course, they have McCullough and Jackson. Coming in the safety spots for them, um, Jackson a little, little bit of bright spot. He had like four interceptions last year, yep. so um, and still got a they got a Bryson Bryce Thompson to lock down one of the corner spots. Yep, yep. Uh, the other corner spots still up in the air, so those will go go from there and try to figure something out. But Bryson Thompson, he had like three interceptions last year, so yep. even though they're kind of weak there, there's still some potential there. Yeah, so our our uh, defensive backfield's probably that's like Pruitt's baby. Like he he loves corners, and that's what he recruits really well. Alante Taylor's a really good corner of ours as well. Warren Burrell had a lot of starts, um, and then Jalen McCullough. He's like the he's like the guy to look for now, and they're always looking for. You talk about Schamberger. I think he played the uh, what do they call it? The, it's the nickel spot basically. Yes, that's, that's we call, we call it something different. I can't remember. They're always you know defensive lingo. Uh, but anyway, uh, he's a good one. He's a good nickelback, and that's that's kind of our strong suit. Safeties are what I worry about. I know that they're not sure if it's going to be Trayvon Flowers or Theo Jackson. And McCullough thanks, Trayvon Flowers. There. Didn't he have an injury last year? Yeah, he got banged up a little bit. I don't remember what it was, though. Okay. But, yeah, our defense is supposedly supposed to be really good. Like, not maybe not really good. Like, our defensive line – it's a good SEC line. I wouldn't say it's like the best by yeah. any means, but it's good. It's better than what it was a couple years ago, where one of the biggest questions with Tennessee was always in the trenches, and it made me want to like cover my ears and yell because it all starts in the trenches. I don't care what team you really play for, or what division you're in, and if you've got a good offensive line, your offense has potential. You know, you get your playmakers right. Yeah. If you get some pass rush, you can stop the run. With your defensive line, you're doing good. Like Alabama will send three three defensive linemen sometimes and still get home with a pass rush, with a sack possibly, and that's just huge. If you're having to send five guys on a blitz is what we've been doing a lot and still not getting there, you're probably going to get carved up. Yeah, well, uh, your defense should be good enough this season to actually keep you maybe in some games that the team wouldn't have been in in the past couple of seasons. So that's something you can look for. But, um, well... <sighs> With the new potential and the updated schedule, uh, what do you guys have their record as with a with a ten game schedule? Now, keep in mind, one of these games that was added was a uh, was a tough game. We got an LSU added to that. I got a win in Georgia. Get out of here. <laughs> I think I think we'll be seven and three. Seven if I added that up correctly in my mind, seven and three. Um, I would. With a, where are your wins at? So my wins would come against. I've got us losing. Well, I'll do wins. I've got us beating. Um, hang on. Where is my? Thing? Now, of okay. course, I guess the, I'm guessing these aren't really going to be in order because we don't know what the order is going to exactly. be. Um, right. Just, just throw it out there best you can. And by the way, I hate that we're not playing Oklahoma, but. Oh, um, no. I have us beaten uh, Missouri, South Carolina, 
Arkansas, Kentucky, Vanderbilt, and um, Ole Miss. So that's six. I had a surprise win against Alabama, which I might have to look at again now that our games are getting shuffled. I don't know because it was like a trap game for me. And we played them so good last year. I got a lot of flack from Alabama fans. They called me idiot and all kinds of oh, crap. Oh, you did. But, you did. But you know what? Whatever. So yeah, you uh, you Tennessee <laughs> fans take to take to Twitter and Facebook and defend your boy Jeremy. He was sticking up yeah. for you. I, I think we can honestly do it. They've got a lot of questions now. It's weird. Uh, you know, I'd have to see the schedule and it's got to play out right. But that's that was my seventh win. I've got us losing to Florida, which to me really sucks. But I think we, we have a really good chance against Florida. Don't get me wrong. I'd say that we're not um, going to be favored in that game. And, again, who knows? If it ends up being thrown at the end of the season and we're playing well, maybe we are. But as it stood, it was our first SEC game. And at best, we'd be going in 3-0 and against them. Realistically, it would have been 2-1. and uh, Losing at Oklahoma or winning. So that's what I've got. And probably a loss to LSU. I haven't really thought about that game, matching up with LSU and what they've got. And, again, it will really depend on when, when we get them. If we get them first game of the year, I, I give it as good a shot as anybody. I mean, you might got, get They've got a lot else. of questions. They've got yeah. a lot of questions, too. So who knows? I know we all collectively had LSU doing pretty well. But I think I had them too. Yeah. Who knows how they do? And, you know, there's big question marks across the league. But that's where mm. I would say I would say seven and three. I would say we'd probably sit at six and four on most people's radar. Now that's exactly what I've got. And six and four sounds really bad, but it's not. Because like the four games that I'm thinking you're gonna uh, potentially lose: Florida, Alabama, Georgia, and LSU. Those are the four best teams in the league yep. that you were getting matched up with this year. I think pretty much everybody else you guys can just about take. I think. Uh, I think Tennessee could probably go toe to toe with Texas A and M this year. I think, I mean, I think they would pretty much take just about everybody else. They would, they'd probably go toe to toe with Auburn, depending on where the game was played. You guys beat Auburn uh, a couple years back. Mm -hmm. I mean, so it's definitely possible. And the fact that you guys beat Auburn a couple years back with a little bit less talented roster um, maybe proves that Jeremy Pruitt really can just out coach some people and it's not just all about the talent. So you may get the jump on one of these teams like Jeremy's talking about. You went uh toe to toe with Alabama last year, took that game down to the wire until uh your boy Garantano kind of shot that whole game in the foot. <laughs> his but, own I mean, worst um, enemy, buddy. He's his own worst enemy. Georgia's got a lot of questions this year. Um Florida, I <laughs> We kind of talked about Florida, and they had like a super easy schedule, but uh, I'm not like super high on everything they've got right now. So, I mean, there are opportunities here. It's just which one are you going to take? Yep. So, um, I've got, without without throwing the surprise game in there like Jeremy did, without throwing the underdog win, I'm going to say a base six and four. I will say, Andrew, who was uh, who was going uh, to win in that Oklahoma game? Oh, I, I was going to pick Tennessee to beat Oklahoma. I was. Yay. I was just. I, See, I really he's got was. a. He bleeds a little orange. Uh, no, we, no, 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 no. <laughs> when you see that, when we, I guess when we see that schedule layout, it's going to yeah. depend a lot on that too. Uh, especially yes. if they have one, a lot of the couple of weaker games in a sense, like three or four, well, like three of them in in the beginning. Where yeah. they get one of the huge teams that may give that quarterback some of the confidence, and they can keep on rolling from there to start to get that momentum and take one of them big wins. It really could, because like I was reading to you earlier, he he played really well in uh, in games versus unranked opponents. Maybe where the pressure wasn't really all always there, and you know maybe he could get like a head of steam built up and stuff, you know. But during ranked opponents, like he just kind of like broke down. So it, you're right if you can kind of get that build up before those games, and you can be feeling really good about yourself. That might make all the difference in the world. Definitely, because he's 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 really talented. If you watch some of the stuff he can do, he's he's a pretty talented quarterback, and he's it's a tough kid. It's disappointing to see some of his letdowns and some of the things that he just fails to do. And uh, I, I, as an SEC fan, would like to see that turn around. And you'll definitely know who he is as a quarterback this season because obviously it's his last one. But if you look at where we were the first half of the season versus the second half of the season. It looked like a completely different team because, I mean, like you said, you, you lost to Georgia State. You lost an overtime to BYU. Then you got pounded by Florida, and then you had the next week against Georgia. Then you turned around and beat uh, Mississippi State 20-10, to 10, so it was close. But then after that, after that, you, uh, <laughs> you, 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 know, you played Alabama super close, 
and then you won out the rest of your your games. Granted, they weren't the top teams, but they were SEC teams, South Carolina, Kentucky, Missouri, Vanderbilt, and then you went to your bowl game, and and you didn't play great. Like, Garantano did not play great, but you did come from – he actually got benched in that game and then br- got brought back in and then took the team and uh, come from behind game. It was entertaining, um, and thankfully we won. But uh, So I think we've got one of the longest winning streaks right now. So if they can continue that and uh, play against teams with better, you know, um, I don't want to say better talent, but, you know, teams that have been owning us for a while, the Georgians and Florida's and Alabama's, and, yeah. you, know, um, you know, our recruiting is definitely already getting better, and we're starting to beat out all these other programs to see it on the field. That'll, that'll go a big way. That'll go a long way if you can beat Florida this year. That's big. Plus, I can't say it enough. This is this will be uh, Jim Cheney's second year, so everybody, you know, he knows what he has, even with his new people, relatively well. It's not a brand new install. They know his terminology, so it should be better. Because at the beginning of the year, it was vanilla offense, and I hated it. And then towards the end, you know, you could see we actually had wrinkles. We were doing more things. They looked more comfortable, especially Garantano. Even though, honestly, JG looked way better coming into the game after being benched or not starting. And I think it might be a pressure thing. It's definitely his problem is the six inches between his ears. It's his brain. Like, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's just big games or he puts too much pressure on himself. I've heard that before. Like, he, you know, if he went and threw an interception, he'll linger on it instead of saying, okay, it's gone. So, I don't know. I have high hopes, and we'll see. You never know. Depends on what team shows up. Is it the team that played Alabama toe to toe, or is it the team that lost to Georgia, Georgia State? State. Exactly. We'll find out. No. Well, uh, guys, our, our, we've ran over a little bit, but there was definitely a lot to talk about with the schedule changes. And uh, Tennessee was, we really had to dissect this team to kind of get to the heart of what's going on. And I mean, you hear a lot of people talk a lot of crap about Tennessee, but. Is it really going to be deserved this year? You know, everybody, you always hear that are, is, is Tennessee back? Is this year, their year, this and that? Well, I think that they are an above average SEC team this year. Uh, I'll give you guys that. I was I was looking for a surprise win against Oklahoma. Unfortunately, we're not going to get to see that. Hopefully, they'll reschedule that. But um, this was an exciting team to do some research on. I'll definitely, definitely. say that. Uh, Jeremy, in closing, is there anything you would like to say while you have this platform to your fellow Tennessee fans? I think everybody sees the light at the end of the tunnel. So we went through the worst decade of football ever. (laughs) And I'm not joking. I think we had our worst season, like 2017, four wins, Mm -hmm. Butch's last, which was like, it's legit, the worst season Tennessee's ever had. It might have tied with one from like 1920 or something. Like legit, the worst ever. And I know we had the worst defense ever. Uh, But I like where we're at. I love Pruitt. I think he's a good football coach. I love our coordinators. So let's go. I think like Tennessee's a cat poster. Hang in there. Yeah. Hang in there. I think we've been hanging in there for a long <laughs> time. We've been patient. We've been really patient for a long time. If anybody's wearing orange, you see them out, they're a real fan. They're no bandwagon fan, I can tell you that. Yeah. So I'm ready. Now we have to wait a little bit longer, but I am ready. All right, guys, as soon as we get more information on these updated schedules, we will get it to you. We will let you know. Uh, follow us on social media for the most instant updates, and we'll yep. have the videos out and the uh, podcast out. So uh, thanks for tuning in to our Tennessee video, and go for three. Go for three. Go three. Big Orange. Say it, Queasy. Go Big Orange. Uh, Rocky Top. Go Blue. Get no dogs. <laughs>